And this is another projectile problem. Again, grade 12 class, just in case you're watching the wrong video, because otherwise you're going to be really confused. Right, so from your worksheet, this is number 10. Uh, hockey player hits a puck with his hockey stick, which is a good thing to hit a puck with. Puck is launched at an angle of 45 degrees uh, to the ice surface. Hits the ice again 35 meters down the length of the, tr length of the rink. Find the velocity of the puck when it left the hockey stick. Okay. This is one of those questions that reads very innocently, but as you get going, you realize it's a little trickier than you once thought. The main reason it's going to be tricky is because you're not given the time, and I'm not going to give it to you, so we're going to have to work through it the math way. So I've already done the little diagram up with an oversized puck, but you get the idea it's going to have follow the parabolic path and land back in the ice. So a couple of things about landing back where it was originally shot is that you know what the initial Y position was, and you know what the final Y position was. That might be a little helpful. The whole point of the question is to find the magnitude of the velocity. I have the angle, 45 degrees. I'll come into play a little bit later. So the question here is all about which formula do you, do you use, and there is not one formula that will do it. It's going to be uh, set up a couple of formulas and do some substitution okay, and rearrange things to get what you want. So I'll show you how to do it. Uh, start by analyzing the velocity and into its components. The x component of the puck is the magnitude of the velocity cosine of the angle it's shot at. That is also equal to the distance in the extraction it's traveled over time. And we have the distance in the extraction, the horizontal distance traveled, that's 35 meters. So this part of that relationship will be useful. I'm trying to solve for the magnitude, the capital V. I have my angle, I have my horizontal distance, but I do not have time. So let's fill that in. So V cosine 45 equals 35 over T. That's as far as I can go. I've got one equation and two variables. So I'm just going to remember that one a little later on. Now I go to analyzing the Y. Quite often to analyze Y positions, we go to the formula that looks like this one. DFY equals D initial Y plus V initial Y times T plus one half G T squared. Um, G 9.81, using the negative. Looking at the components again for the velocity, V initial in the Y direction doesn't help us. That's not what we want to figure out. We want to figure out the magnitude. Well, it's the magnitude sine of the angle. So the angle is 45 degrees. So I'm going to do a substitution there, just a little substitution. There's no point in having an equation with the initial in the y direction when I have no way of kind of getting that, and I'm given angle. So it's v sine 45. So I'm going to rerun, rewrite my big equation up here, simplify it a little bit, put some numbers in that I know. Lands where it was hit, so the final position 0, initial position 0, plus V initial Y is now V sine 45. Don't forget your T is still there. Minus 4.905 T squared. Remember G is negative 9.81 divided by 2. That's where the 4.905 comes from. So we've got an equation. Now if you look carefully, a little arrow here, we have one equation, two unknowns. The unknown variable is V and T. Well, up here, unknown variable is V and T. When you get that, you have two equations and you have two unknown variables. We can do some math magic. That's what you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a lot easier to substitute equation one into equation two. Don't try to eliminate variables in this one. It may or may not work because of the, uh, because of the quadratic in the time. So I'm going to take equation one and I'm going to rearrange it and solve it four times. So I'm just going to write it down here again. It's V cosine 45 equals 35 over T. Rearrange that for time. Cross multiply, it'll be T, V cos 45. So it'll be 35 over 
v to cosine 45. I'm not working out the cosine of 45 yet, uh, just because I've worked it out a few times now, and I know some cancellation is going to happen, so that's why I'm not calculating what cosine 45 is going to be. All right, so that's my kind of rearranged form of equation one. This value, I'll circle that in kind of some blue, okay, half square it, is going to go in for my t's. Then I'm going to have an equation with my only unknown variable being my magnitude of the velocity. So it looks like 0 equals v sine 45 times t. Well, t is now 35 over v cosine 45 minus 4.905 35 over v cosine 45 and squared. Whoa. Okay. Now here's where some nice things happen. V on the top there, V on the bottom. Sine 45, cosine 45 evaluate to the exact same ratio. So that's why I didn't work it out before. I knew it was going to simplify a little bit here in the end. So what you're left with of that kind of first term on the right side is just 35. So simplify it again. 0 equals 35 minus 4.905. I'll leave that out in front. And I'll work out what 35 squared is. 1225. On the bottom, it's v squared cos squared 45. Looks a little messy, but it actually fairly easy to solve now at this point. Bring the 35 over, negative 35 equals negative, multiply those top numbers together, 6,008.625, I'm just going to keep all my digits for v squared cos squared uh, 45. I'll work that out right now, cosine of 45 and then square it. Cosine 45 squared, ah, exactly 0 0.5. So one more little step of simplifying. Negative 35 equals, so 6008.625 divided by 0 0.5, 12017 and a quarter. Cross multiply up. I forgot my negative sign there. Don't forget that. So, divide both sides by negative 35. So, I'm showing lots of steps. You wouldn't normally have to show all of these steps. Uh, but it's a, the first problem we're doing where it's a little bit tricky like this with the substitution. So, I wanted to do that. So, divide both sides by the negative 35. You get 343.35. Hit the square root button, and we get 18.5 meters per second, which rounds to what we're told the answer should be velocity of 19 meters per second. All right, so again, it, don't get too uh, worried about something like this. It's a lot of math. It's a lot of steps, but we've done similar stuff before, and we'll have lots of practice. So you set up your horizontal component equation, solve it for time. Set up your displacement equation in the y directions and substitute in what the definition of the y component of velocity is. Those become our two equations. Okay. Substitute the time relationship from equation one into the bigger equation we call equation two. Work with your math. Use as many steps as you need to, whatever you need to do to simplify it. As you practice this, you should probably take less and less time and be able to uh, do them in less steps. Huzzah.